Hey everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. Well, my latest video on the upcoming ABS legislation has caused quite a stir. If you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it before this one. I'll put a link to it in this video. If you can't be bothered watching that, here's the basic information you need. The government has legislated that certain motorcycles require an anti-lock braking system and this is being fully implemented in Australia by November 2021. Numerous other countries have already done this or something similar. These include Europe, Japan, India, China, and Brazil. Oh, and before we get any further, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber really helps and check out my older content too. What my previous video shows is there's a lot of backlash to ABS being mandatory on motorcycles. The result of this is certain motorcycles won't be sold anymore and may even be discontinued unless manufacturers intervene. So what I thought I'd do is talk about why ABS is being forced on the motorcycles, what the advantages and disadvantages are, and possibly answer some of your questions along the way. ABS is by no means a new technology, it has been around for years. In fact, it was first used on motorcycles by BMW on their K100 way back in 1988. Suffice to say, it's been around for a while now, and it has come a long way since then. So why is ABS being made mandatory? Well, it's a lot of reasons and I'm going to go through the main ones. There have been several studies done on ABS with the goal to discover whether or not it was actually beneficial to have on motorcycles. Some of the major ones have been done in both Europe and the USA, but I'm going to look at the latest one that was done in Australia. The study was done to determine if ABS on motorcycles is beneficial, should it be used on smaller motorcycles to predict road trauma and economic costs. So basically the government wanted to know if the technology actually worked and if it would help reduce motorcycle related trauma. Their findings show that motorcycles with ABS resulted in a 33% reduction of all injuries and a 39% reduction in serious and fatal crashes. So that's pretty significant. Before you call BS, the studies done in Europe and the USA got pretty much the exact same results or even higher. The samples were taken over a 10 year period and I'll put a link to the paper in the video description below. Pretty much, motorcycles with ABS are safer. But that doesn't answer everything. Another reason ABS brakes are being mandated is the cost savings to society. The study stated that there was a profound amount of money to be saved and the federal government stated that ABS brakes would save approximately $1.6 billion over 15 years. How is the amount so much? Well, let's break it down. On most crashes, emergency services attend. So you've got your police, ambulance, and firefighters. Then vehicles had to be towed, insurance companies get involved, and the crash is generally investigated. Then you've got hospital costs, doctor's visits, and you could be potentially out of work. Already the dollars are quickly adding up, and this doesn't include everything involved. And if you found out that by simply adding ABS to a bike, it will save you a butt ton of money and have virtually no negative effects, you're kind of mad if you don't. Speaking of negatives, what are they? Well, as my last video showed, you could potentially lose some bikes. People love their simple, reliable, cost-effective bikes. Just look at the sales of the DRZ400 and DR650. Also, costs can go up, but not as much as you think. The Monash University study I referred to earlier actually spoke with the main motorcycle companies to find out how much it would cost. The answer is, 150 US dollars per motorcycle. That's pretty bloody low. A couple of negatives that I have personal experience with is, sometimes the rear brakes can be overly sensitive to ABS. For example, I had a Triumph Street Triple R and the rear brake, man, you only had to slightly touch it and it activate the ABS. Also, if you can't deactivate ABS when riding off-road, it's pretty terrible and frankly dangerous. Thankfully, nearly all adventure motorcycles have the option to turn it off and proper dirt bikes don't require it. Okay, on to the positives. Well, it's safer and I don't think anyone can refute that. And before anyone says, but Curtis, I'm an experienced rider. I don't need ABS. Well, as good as you think you are, you're not better than ABS, let alone the newer ABS that is being released lately. The cornering ABS and IMUs nowadays are awesome and can legitimately save you. Even the best rider is going to get into serious trouble when something out of the ordinary happens. And yes, I know ABS isn't used in MotoGP, and that's not because it isn't better, it's because they want to keep costs down, maintain the spectacle, and make it about the riders. Oh, and another thing for my US viewers, the US National Transportation Safety Board has recommended ABS brakes be on all motorcycles. 
so take from that what you will. I suppose I better give my thoughts on ABS. Personally, I don't mind it at all. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like it when it's overly intrusive, but the newer bikes nowadays have got it pretty dialed in. On the dirt, I'm happy as long as you can turn it off, and on the track, I'm happy as long as it's not too intrusive or you have the ability to dial it down. I'll be the first person to say politicians are a bunch of fucktards and they should leave us alone. But this isn't one of those times. At the end of the day, it's on the manufacturer to simply update their bikes or tweak them that little bit so they don't require ABS. Or put ABS on, it's $150. We'll be safer, we'll get the bikes and who doesn't want a 6-speed EFI DR650? I know I do. What do you all think? Are you for ABS? Are you against it? Do you hate it? Do you hate the government? Let me know in the comments below. And speaking of fucktards, don't be one. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. Okay, that's it from me. Until the next time, keep it on the back wheel, people.